Hi everyone, my name is Lydia and welcome. Today we're going to be painting Ethereal Fairy. I'll go over the painting process as well as a little drawing tutorial to help you draw your fairy. Also given the materials that you'll need to do the painting and I'll list those materials down in the description box below. And for those of you that have taken the time to subscribe to my channel, thank you very much. And if you haven't subscribed, please consider doing so and hitting that like button. I've also provided a photo of the final painting on my Instagram account, Lydia Pangborn Art, to help you in your painting process. So grab, so grab your painting materials, something to stay hydrated, and I'll meet you back at the easel. stretched and primed canvas and I'm going to be using acrylic paints and the colors on my palette are quinacridone magenta, cadmium red medium, burnt sienna, cadmium yellow medium, phthalo green, phthalo blue, dioxane purple, and titanium white. So the brushes I'm going to be using are about a three quarters inch to a full inch flat brush a round brush, and this is about a medium size. This is a number six. And remember that the size is vary between paint com companies. I'm going to be using a small filbert brush. And I'm also going to be using a fan brush today. If you don't have a fan brush, you can always use the corners of your flat brush. You're also going to want to have a jar of water for rinsing your brushes, a paper towel or an old cloth for drying your brushes, and a Mr. Bottle for keeping everything damp as you work. So we're going to go ahead and get started. I'm going to start by putting my background on and I'm going to be using my flat brush to do that. And get I'm it wet in the jar, wipe off any excess water. One thing that you can do to help with the blending process, you can either wet the back of your canvas, or if you want to take your Mr. Bottle and give it a little spritz before you start putting on your background color, you can do that. I want my background color to be blue. I'm going to grab some white. Um, I'm going to press my brush into my white, and I'm going to come down and get, I'm going to pull out from the outer edge of my paint, I'm going to pull out some of this phthalo blue. So I've got maybe a little quarter inch little dollop of blue and I'm going to work to have and this blue can vary from dark to light light to dark whatever you want we're just going to be in the sky area so I'm going to go ahead and just start making crisscross strokes Remember to press hard to get the paint off your brush. So if you see the press there, you can see that I'm actually pressing the paint out of the brush. And then I can come back through and just give a nice light sweep across my canvas to blend it in. And I just want a nice blended sky. And you can use a bigger brush if you want to, to get the background on. You can use a two inch brush if you want to help more paint. But I'm gonna come back into my paint I'm going to pick up some more of my white and again about a quarter inch, just a little bit of that blue color. And I'm going to come below where I put the last bit. So where I stopped, I'm just coming below and I'm getting a little bit more water and I'm just going to blend it in. And I don't mind variations, so you can see up here, 
I've got a little bit of the darker blue and the lighter blue. And if you feel like your paint isn't covering, as always, you can go back in and do a second coat. So if you're using some student grade paints and the pigments aren't as thick or they're not as, as um, dark, you can always go back in and work in a second coat. So I'm gonna come back in, get my white, and I'm gonna press my brush into the paint so I can load the brush up and then I'm gonna come down again. And I always like to come to the outer edge of my paint so I don't contaminate too much of my paint that I have on my palette. And I'm gonna come below where I started again and just start working that up into my areas that are above. And then once I get the paint pressed out as much as I can, come in and just do, I can even dip a little bit. So I'm gonna dip just a little bit into my water and just sweep across. And that'll give it a nice even look. So that helps to just blend it in and come back in. I dipped into my water again, coming back to my paint. There we go. And I'm just gonna come below that. I'm gonna pick up just a little bit more of my white, just so I have enough to blend it into that blue. Get a little bit of water on my brush and just start working that in. And I did it one more time or I did it again. Just picking up, I'm just continuing to go back and just get more paint on my brush, pressing it out, pressing pressing into the canvas to get the paint off my brush, going back in, get a little water, and just sweep across. And again, if you feel like your paint's rather sticky, it's not spreading the way you want it to, just give yourself a moment to give a little spritz on the canvas. And then you can come in and you can see that that helps to blend that paint a little better when your canvas is wet. Especially if you put if you put a coat of gesso on before, which isn't always necessary, but sometimes with canvases, they can come out of the package, not especially if they're low quality and they can be a little sticky and stiff. So putting a coat of gesso on or maybe even a, a coat of um, titanium white paint on will help. So just know that it's not always you and your technique. Sometimes it's the product itself. And I do like the variations I have here in the sky of the different colors because this is going to be above the tree line. So I'm going to wet my brush one more time, get off any excess water, and I'm going to work from the bottom and come all the way up. So we're gonna let this dry and we're gonna come back in and we'll start putting in our drawing. Okay, so now that our background is dry, we're gonna come in and put in our branches for our tree. As I'm gonna have my round brush and I'm gonna get it a little wet in the water and I'm going to pull in some of my burnt sienna and some purple. And it's gonna be a fairly dark color. I'm gonna pick up just a little bit of white And I want to decide where I want my branches to be. I'm gonna mix up just a little bit more of this color. So it's, it's pretty much equal parts burnt sienna and dioxine purple with a little bit of white. And I'm rolling my brush around into the paint. And I'm gonna come up about from the bottom of a canvas, maybe about an inch. And I just want my first branch to come up and then make a little arc and I'm going to keep, so this is a halfway point. I want the end of it to maybe end just below the halfway point here. So I'm just coming up an inch and this doesn't have to be precise. You can make this any way that you want it, but I'm twisting as I'm going and I'm just bringing it over. So there's branch number one and I want another thicker branch 
something about the same thickness coming off of it. And I'm gonna come right about here where this bump is. And I'm gonna do the same thing here. And then, and I am, I'm twisting my brush as I go. And I'm gonna have this one kind of growing down that way. And you can do your branches any way that you want. We're gonna have other branches coming off of this, but I'm gonna go ahead, now that I have an idea where I want these to be, I'm gonna go ahead and just fill this in. And I am doing light pressure towards the end to make it smaller. So even as I go back and fill it in, I'm pulling up a little bit. And then what I want to do is I want to decide where I want some more small branches coming off. So maybe some that are a little smaller coming off of this. So maybe a few coming off this way and this way. So you can decide and you can even have, if you want another branch coming up, however you want to do it. We are going to be putting some leaves to fill this in and some of those leaves can be detached from the branches. So I'm gonna go back into my paint. And this time my pressure is gonna be a little lighter and I'm gonna have my brush more on the tip of the brush. So when I did the dragging of the branches before, it was more on the side, but now it's gonna be more on the tip. And I'm gonna have a few smaller branches coming off. So I'm still gonna be doing the twisting action. So maybe we have one here and I'm very lightly touching. And at the very end, I'm going to lift off and we can go back in and fill that in. Same thing, maybe I want another one, maybe growing here, very light touch. Maybe I'll have one smaller one coming from back here and reaching up. And then maybe one off this one coming here. And reaching down. So again, we're gonna have some leaves in there. So what I'll do is I'll go back in now and I'll just lightly, I'm still on the tip of the brush, just fill those in. I'm gonna put a little bit more white into my paint because I feel like it's a little bit too transparent. So I just added some of my titanium white and I'm just going back in. And remember your acrylic paints will dry darker than when you actually first put them on the canvas. And if there are any other spots that didn't get filled in, now's your time to fill them in. We'll go back in and highlight everything as we go. So now that we have that, I'm going to put my round brush down, rinse it out. So now I'm going to take my small filbert brush and I'm going to pick up the same color. So it's the same mix of paint, the Diox Purple, the Burnt Sienna, a little bit of my Titanium White. And I'm again gonna be right on the tip of that brush and I'm gonna start maybe making a few even smaller branches. It's a very light touch and I'm still doing the twisting action as I move. And just remember, this is, this is a branch of a tree that we're looking at, and there's going to be leaves on it, and then some of the leaves will be flying up in the air. I want to make sure that this looks like it's coming off the canvas there. And then if you feel like any of that got thin, you can come back in, pick up a little bit more of that same paint, and just go in and fill that in again very much on the tip of the brush, very light. OK, 
Okay, we're gonna let that dry. And we're rinsing both of our brushes out. So while we're waiting for our painting to dry, I thought I would take a moment to go over some of the drawing process along with the composition process of our fairy today. So I'm gonna introduce you to a friend of mine. I call my friend A.H. And that is short for anatomy human. Just remember when you're looking at this body, this is the very basic form broken down. Of course, we're all made a little differently, but this gives you the idea of how things are with the human body and it's in a, in a very basic form. So, so if I was to measure from the bottom of the waist down, he's about from here to his feet, about four inches, maybe just a little bit more than four inches. And it's the same if you look at the arm length. So from the tip of the hand, about into the torso, it's about four inches. And then if you look at the head, it's about an inch. If you look at the torso itself, it's a little over two inches. So that tells me that my torso is about half the length of my legs and half the length of my arm, and that my head is maybe about half the length of my torso. It's just to give you an idea of the beginning process of how you can create the human form because it's not always um, easy, especially if you're trying to get your form in a certain position. So I'm going to put my little friend away and we will go over a simple drawing for your fairy. One thing I do have is the leaf that I am using, the leaf shape of my painting, was actually a leaf that I picked up off the ground outside because I found something that was, that was a good size to fit into my painting. My fairy is quite tiny on this painting because the painting size is small. So I have my piece of paper and I'm gonna make my fairy torso line. So I'm gonna start by drawing just a straight line that's about an inch. So I'm gonna come down about an inch and draw a nice straight line. I'm gonna come in and draw a line about an inch. And I sometimes I will use my finger from here to here. For me, it's about an inch. And that's actually a little longer than an inch. I'm gonna erase a little bit of that off because I made it just a little too long, got carried away there. All right, so I have about an inch here and I'm gonna put a little line at the very top and a little line at the very bottom so that I know about where the head will be and where the legs meet the bottom of the torso. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take this front leg, I'm gonna angle it out slightly. So I'm gonna angle her leg out. So that's the top part of her leg. I'm drawing that about an inch. And then I'm going to angle it back because she's floating through the air. And that's gonna be about an inch. And this is gonna be her knee. All right, and then this leg is going to be angled back and I'm gonna to try to keep these knees about the same way. And this leg is gonna have a little bit more of a straightness to that back leg. And let's see, is that about an inch? I'm gonna go a little longer here. And you can always adjust them as you go. So now we can start filling in the pieces that we have. And notice that I do have the knees about the same and really, we're not gonna to play too much with perspective today because sometimes things further away can look a little shorter. We're just getting our little fairy in there. And um, what I'm gonna do where I drew this line here at the base of the torso where it meets the legs, I'm gonna come up just maybe about a quarter of an inch and I'm gonna make a half circle. So I'm gonna come here, start right on the line that I drew and just make a little half circle. And again, we can adjust this as we go. And I just made the circle come all the way around to about where I started up here on the top part of the circle. Now we're gonna start filling, filling in the hamstring, which is the back part of the legs. So I'm gonna go ahead. Um, since her leg is flying back, it gives a little bump in her glute, her, her butt muscle. And I'm gonna make what's more of a elongated circle or an oval and I'm going to come right to where my my butt circle is crossing that line and I'm just going to go out and back in and so I've got the hamstring on that leg and then I'm going to come to right below where the knee would be and I'm going to make a little line just about a quarter inch there so it's going to be where my foot's going to go 
and I'm going to make another elongated, not quite as fat as this. And remember, if you look at it when you're done and you need to make adjustments, you have an eraser and you can always erase it. And I will fill this in for you so you can see it, so you can see where I went with it. But this is how you can get, you can play around with your fairy, get the form that you want, and then trace over it with a piece of um, tracing paper, and then get that on your painting if you need to. So from here, I'm gonna come from just behind the knee, and I'm going to start and then bump out and come back in. So you can already see there's a little lift for the calf muscle, and then we'll go down to the foot. I'm gonna come back to the foot later. So now what I'm going to do is I need to add just a little bit on the front. Now, the, the front part of our leg on the upper part of the leg where your quadricep is, it's, it's a little bit more thick than coming down here where the shin is because that's a bit more bone. So I'm gonna come to where my little line is that I drew where the torso and the legs meet and I'm just gonna make a little curve out. And again, it's just an elongated oval. All right, so there's the leg for the upper part. And then right here on the front, I don't want it to get too big. So I'm gonna come out, but only so slightly for the shin part of the leg. Okay, so we have the back leg except for the foot. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna do the same thing on this side, very similar. So I'm just really drawing elongated oval. So if you think of an oval, just like this, looks almost like a, an, an almond leaf shape. So from here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come from where my glute is over here and where my little line is that I drew. And I'm going to do the back part of this leg, just like I did over here. So the hamstring on the back of this leg. And again, I'm going to come out and pull it in. And then I'm going to come down to the calf muscle, right where that dot is of the bent knee. And I'm going to draw again, I'm going to draw my little line down here. I do that to kind of help me know not to go too far down this way, because when you get the foot in, sometimes it gets funny looking and you have to make adjustments. So I'm going to come not quite as big. And I may want to adjust this a little bit fatter. And then I'm going to come out with the calf muscle and carve it back in. Then I'm going to come to do the top part or the quadricep of this front leg. So I'm just going to come up to about where my line is again. So I'm going to come here where my line is. And it's right there in the middle of the glute area. So that's about where my line is. And I'm going to make a little jut out and come in. And then again, I want to come down to the lower part where the shin is and jut that out a little bit. So you can start to see what it's looking like for you. And if you want to, you can take a moment just to kind of fill this in and see what this is looking like. Do you want a little bit more filled in here, there? Do you like the way this is looking? The legs are pretty spread apart here. And I'm going to give a little bit more roundness to her glute here. I want her to be a very glutey fairy. All right, so she's there. And I think I went too fat right here. So again, this is where you can start to look at it, make adjustments. Or if you want to, you can say, oh, well, this one's a little skinnier. So I'm going to make that a little broader to match this one. But I still think... This is a little bit too, too much right there. And the great thing is we look at the human form every single day. That's why if you look at a drawing or a painting and something is off, your eye automatically registers it to your brain and you just know, especially in drawing faces, if something's not the way it should be as far as things lined up where they are supposed to go, you can automatically see that because you're so used to looking at bodies and human faces day in and day out. Now I'm going to go down here and I'm going to draw these little footsies in. So think of your feet as um, triangles. So a pizza slice almost. So something that looks like that. And it just really depends on which way 
you want your feet to go. Hers are flying back. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make her little heel back here and she doesn't have to have big feet. And I just made a little triangle and I'm gonna do the same thing here. So a little triangle. And if you make it too big, again, you can adjust it. So I made her little heel a little too big there. And it's just little tiny marks for her because she's so small. All right, so there's that. So we have her lower body in. You can see, begin to see that she's flying through the air. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put her back in. Now, the upper back curves out and then it curves down into the lumbar. So you've got that, everybody has a, um, unless of course your body has some some health issues, but you have that lower curve in your back. So I'm gonna start here um, where I drew my top line and I'm going to, it's about a quarter inch long. I'm going to go out and curve it in to meet the glute. So I'm gonna curve out and then I'm gonna give her that lower back curve. And so there's that. And again, as we go along, we can adjust. I don't wanna adjust that yet. I wanna see how I play around with the front. So now what we can do is we can do the front part. So she's going to have a little bump out here for her chest. And then we're gonna come in and then we're gonna go straight down to meet her leg. So now if I were to color this in, I'm gonna bump her chest out just a tad more. There we go. So there she is. So now we have her torso in. Now here comes the, the fun part. I'm gonna go ahead and do her head. So let's talk about the head. So I think about the head, I think about an oval, almost like um, an old light bulb. An old light bulb. So you can kind of get an idea of what you're talking about when you're talking about a head. All right, so for the head, Thinking about that light bulb, we know that the head's about, maybe about half the size of the torso. So if this torso is about an inch, we're gonna come up maybe about half an inch. So I'm gonna put a little mark right here. So this is about half an inch. So I know I need to make my oval not too big. We wanna make sure we have a little bit of a, a neck coming out. So I'm gonna make a oval here. And then I'm gonna elongate my oval so it's an elongated oval like that. All right. So then from there, what we can do is we want to think about when we come up from the neck here, there's a little bit of a, a chin and then we have a bit of a nose and then we have a little bit more of a bigger forehead here so the forehead comes out. And I know that's probably gonna be hard to see, but there's a, a little bit more of a jut out of the forehead. Then here's where our eye will be. We've got a little nose and we can put a little chin coming down to the neck. And the hair can be any way that you want it. If you want just to have, you know, just put in your little outline of your hair and you can create long hair, short hair, um, no hair if you don't want hair at all. So just whatever you wanna do with your fairy. And of course you can add a little pointy ear there if you'd like. So now what we need are the arms, which we know are very similar to the size of the legs. So I'm gonna imagine that from the side closest to the viewer. So from that point, we're gonna make about our inch long arm here, and we're gonna have it reach up and then we'll come Imagine another arm coming from the other side and we're gonna, we're gonna bring that down so that the elbow bends about the same and we're gonna reach up. So then we know we've got the bicep that we wanna create. So again, we're doing ovals, the little tricep, and then we'll have a bicep and a tricep. So we have the front part and the back part of the arm. And those are gonna be a little bit more filled out like your top part of your leg and then we're gonna go for the thinner arm. So you're gonna have that little partial oval on the top side of the arm and not much going on on the bottom, top part of the arm and not much going on on the bottom. 
So, and this is my little ear here, my little fairy ear. And you don't have to have a little pointy ear if you don't want. My hair will probably cover that anyway. Um, make sure you got like a nice little chin there. So you can see it coming together. And for the, for the hands for now, I'm just gonna create, come to a point and come to a point and just stick out a little thumb. We're gonna actually be painting in her holding on to her, her little leaf. Then what we can do is we can decide how we want her to hold her leaf. So if she's holding the leaf here, then we can take our leaf and put it down on our piece of paper and we can just start to trace around the leaf that she's holding, making sure that we put the, the stem of the leaf in her hand. And again, if you feel like you need to fill out a little bit more of the arm, a little bit more of the shoulder, I'll color in her neck so you can see that. And you can play with making it work the way that you want it to work. So if you want her to be turned a different way, if you want her legs to go different, then you can play around with it the way that you want it. And there you go. You have like the basic form of how to draw your fairy. And the more that you play around with drawing your fairies like this or drawing any form like this, the better you get at doing it. And you can put them in any position that you want. We're back and I went ahead and drew my fairy in on my canvas. And so that you could see it better, I went ahead and painted her in white, except for I made the wings a darker blue because I want the blue background to come through her wings. And what we're going to start to do now is we are going to begin to put our illusion of leaves on our branch. And to do that, we're going to use our fan brush. So I'm gonna take my fan brush, and if you'll see, the bristles are somewhat separated now because it is a little damp, but I'm gonna go ahead and stick this in my water. And then I'm gonna get the excess water off and when I do that, you can see how the bristles tend to separate and stick together in clumps. And so we, that's what we want. We want our brush to have this separated look about it once we dip it in the water. So I'm going to keep the leaves down here um, more in the burnt sienna, reddish, orange range. And the ones up here are going to be a bit more we're going to lead into a bit more of the orangey yellow. So and I'm going, to, I'm going to press my brush into the burnt sienna. And I'm going to get a little bit of the cadmium red medium down in here as well. So I'm just going to tap in. And I'm using a just a random kind of turning motion with my brush. And when I feel like my paint is off one side, then I can take it to the other side. And if you feel as though you need to keep reloading, certainly do that. And again, I'm just turning. And these leaves don't have to necessarily be um, touching your branches. So it's a, a light touch. And I'm just turning my brush and moving it along in little spaces where I think there may be some leaves. And I'm not trying to go in and paint individual leaves. I'm just trying to go in and give the illusion that there's leaves on this tree. And as I move up higher, I'm gonna start to add in, I'm not rinsing my brush. I'm just coming down here and I'm gonna pick up some of the yellow and drag it up here between the burnt sienna and my cadmium red. And I'm just gonna tap my brush a little bit to separate some of those bristles back out. And then I'm going to come down into this area where it just was, but then start to lead up into these branchy areas. And I'm turning my brush in all different directions. And I want it to be brighter at the top so our eye comes up to our little fairy. You even lead some of that out that way. I don't want to get too carried away. I just want to give this idea that we've got some leafy foliage.
So I'm gonna leave it at that and I'm gonna rinse out my fan brush. So I've rinsed out my fan brush and I'm coming back to my round brush and I'm gonna go in and get a little bit of my mixture that I have here, but I wanna pull a bit more of the cadmium red into that mixture. I'm just rolling that around and I'm just gonna come in and just start to put that red up on my leaf more towards the center. And I'm just dabbing it in, scumbling it in, and just trying to really just fill it in right now. And I'm not going all the way to the edge just yet. Now I'm gonna not rinse my brush. I'm gonna take some of my yellow. So I'm coming down here to my cadmium yellow medium. And I'm gonna to go to the outer edges of my leaf and start to now, I can start to fill in along the edges. So I will be coming in really close to those edges and then dabbing that in. And I'm just filling it in dabbing my brush, little short brush strokes to get right up to the edge of my leaf. So the edges of this leaf are a little bit more rough, so they're not smooth edges. That's why I'm doing this little dabbing motion. So we get the illusion that this leaf has uneven edges. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some, I'm gonna rinse my brush off, I'm gonna take some of that paint off, and I want my brush to be a little wet, and I'm gonna come in and just start where the yellow and the red are. I'm just gonna come in and just start moving that around a little bit. So I wipe some of that moisture off my brush and I'm just coming in and doing a really light circular motion with my brush. So it's given this really natural, uneven look. I'm gonna leave that, that just like that for now. So I'm gonna rinse my brush out and we're gonna come down and work on our fairy a little bit. So I'm gonna zoom you in a little closer so you can see. Okay, we're back and I have you zoomed in and I'm gonna start by saying you can paint your fairy with whatever color you want and however the hair is that you want, however the skin color, the clothes, for me, I like my um, little folks, whether they're nymphs or fairies or, or pixies, whatever they are, I always imagine they live in a world unencumbered. So I'm gonna have her outfit be more of a turquoise, but she's going to have tights on and a tight fitting little crop top and um, no shoes on. So her skin will be showing with her feet, her midriff and her hands. So what I've done, is I have mixed up a color. I've taken my phthalo blue and phthalo green. So phthalo blue, I pulled over, equal melts, phthalo green. Mixed them together, came up, grabbed a little bit of my cadmium yellow medium. And I actually came in and got a little bit of my white and mixed that in. So I'm gonna have her in a green outfit. Now I am using my small filbert brush. I don't want too much paint on my brush, so I may wipe some of that off. And I'm gonna come in and I am going to start with her top. So it's very tiny, so I'm gonna have to really get in here and just start putting in that turquoise top.
And I'm also going to make it so that her sleeves are long. We'll come back in and get her hands in in just a wee bit. And then I'm going to come down here. This is going to be where the top of her tights are. Get a little bit more water on my brush, a little bit more paint. So I'm being a little careful with the amount of paint because she's a small fairy. If you're working on a bigger painting, you'll have bigger space to work with. And I'm gonna come over here and my hand might be in the way, but I'm gonna come over here so I can get nice and even along this edge of her bottom part of her front leg there. Stop right there. And then I'm going to come down to this back leg, come over to this back leg. Okay, so she is wearing, I'm going to fill out her skin area a little better, make it look a little more connected there when we get to that. Okay, so I just wanted to get her little outfit on. And I'm going to grab a little bit of my, I'm not rinsing my brush out, I'm going to take this color that I have on my brush and mix it in with some more white so I can mix in a little bit of a lighter color to do a little highlighting on her outfit. So I'm going to put a little light bit here and just I'm going to dab it with my finger. Of course I have like paint all over my fingers here and then here so it looks like there's a separation of the legs there. And then maybe a little bit on her arm up here. And her arm there. And I'm using some quinacridone magenta, some white, and a hint of my cadmium yellow medium. And I'm mixing that up, a little more white there. I can even get a little touch. I'm just bringing up a little hint. I don't want too much, but a little hint of my purple there. Just a really light touch. And this is going to be her skin color. And again, I don't want too much of that paint on my brush. So I'm going to wipe some of that out. And I'm going to come in and start to work on getting her skin color in there. And where her little foot's a little triangle. Point that back a little bit more. work with that once we get the stem on a little bit and I'm going to go ahead and fill in her face and neck. All right now once I get her outfit the way I like it I want to get all that paint out of the same brush so I'm still going to be using the small 
filbert, filbert brush and I want just white only. So I'm gonna go in, I'm dipping into my titanium white and I do want it to be a little watery. So I'm getting some water, just kind of dipping it in there. And I don't want so much paint. So the, the key here is not to have too much of that paint on your brush. And let's see how this does. And we're just gonna come up in and you can even take your finger and rub it out a little bit. I want to just give like nice little long strokes through her wings. So they look as though they are somewhat transparent. So I don't want to fill them all completely solid in. So I'm just giving this idea and I'm going to leave a little bit of that sky color right along where this is the top part. This is the wing that's furthest away from the viewer. So I want a little space between this bottom wing right here. I'm going to leave it a little darker. And if you lose that, you can always go back in and get a little bit of your blue paint, your sky color, and go back in and fix it the way that you want it. And I want that to be just a little bit more white in certain areas around the outer edges. So this time I'm gonna use a little bit more of the white paint without so much water. And I just wanna go around some of the outer edge of my wing. And add a few bits of that in the middle. And I mean, we can blend that in as well so that we know that she is a fairy. All right, I'm liking that better. I wanna make sure it looks like she does have these attached to her. So I'm kind of bringing that around so she's attached. All right, so I'm liking that. I think I want to go back to my cloth color, my green, and just kind of bring that up just a little higher on her. There we go, I like that better, okay. So I'm gonna give her wings some time to dry before I go in and mess with her head and her face anymore. While we're waiting for our fairy to dry, I've backed you out a little bit and I'm gonna go back to my flat brush that we started with to do the background. And I'm gonna show you a nice easy way to get your stem on and some lines in your leaves. So I'm gonna mix up a little bit of my titanium white a little hint of the cadmium red and a little hint of cadmium yellow. So it's kind of a orange color, but a little lighter than the leaf itself. See if I can get that all mixed in the way I want it, a little more yellow in there. Let's see how this looks against the leaf. So I'm working my brush so it's flat and I'm going to just go straight into my leaf from the very tip and just make little, I'm just going along the middle of my leaf so that I can create a little bit of a vein there. And then I'm gonna have from each of these longer pieces that poke out on each side, I'm gonna have a little vein there. So I'm gonna hold my brush close because I can get in and put my finger, my pinky finger down, and I'm going to do that along the little poking out parts in the middle, and then these little parts here at the very top. So I've got some veins in my leaves, just given that idea of veins, and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to take this color, and I'm just going to start to make a little line where my stem of my leaf might be. Make it nice, nice little long stem that she can ride along and hold on to there. Okay, so what I'm going to do then is I'm, I'm rinsing that color out of my brush and I'm just going to dip down into just my titanium white only and just come back along and do that little highlight on my stem so it's not everywhere along the stem but it's in some places and it's the same 
with my veins just to get a few white little hits within the leaf itself. All right, so I'm liking that. So now I'm gonna let that dry and I'll, I'll come back in to the fairy now that um, I think her wings might be. Everything might be dry. Okay, she's seeming dry. Okay, so now our fairy is pretty dry. So I'm gonna keep her hair short and I am mixing in some, and again, you can make your hair color any color you want. I'm mixing some burnt sienna with a little bit of my cad yellow medium and white. And I'm just going to fill in this little part of her hair here. Kind of has a nice little orange tone to it. All right, once we get her hair on, we'll give that a little bit of time there. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna, before we go put the very finishing touches on her face, I'm gonna come down and just finish up the tree with some of these brighter colors and a few more limbs. All right, so I stopped recording a little bit, but what I did is I went in and I mixed in some, so I've mixed up my cadmium yellow with some cornacridone magenta and some of the cadmium red. And I just went in and I just took my fan brush again and just tapped in some of these orangey looking colors on my tree. And you can add as many as you want. I was just trying to get some of the leaves to kind of float up her way. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my filbert brush and I'm going to dip into that same color. So it's cadmium red, quinacridone magenta, about equal amounts, but then quite a bit of the yellow. And I'm just going to come up and start to make these little bitty, so it's just three little one. So I put a little middle swipe, two, three. And I'm just going to put a few of these around. They're just like maybe look like distant leaves flying with her kind of throughout. Anywhere you might want them. Some of them can even go off the canvas. So it's a middle and then two side pieces there. So they're just all around her. Just little leaves. There we go. And you can make these uh, any, any shape you want. I'm just putting them here to give some movement to the painting. And they can be big. They can be really tiny little little dots of it all around. And I'm gonna put a little bit of them, just kind of make her mixed in with it all. I really like the way that looks. Just brightening up around her. And then I'm gonna take some of that color and still kind of mix it in with my leaf. So it's that same yellow orange mix. And this is where you start to make those decisions about those last bits of things that you want to do. Okay, so I have you zoomed back in. We're going to finish up getting the detail on our face. And I did take a little bit of a um, watercolor pencil and just dot everything in. So I have a little guideline. You're welcome to do that. I'm dipping my liner brush in some water and I am going to come into my purple with my liner brush and I'm going to put two little dots for eyes there and then I'm going to come over to my quinacridone magenta and I didn't rinse my brush out and I want my liner brush to be in a little point, so make sure that you get your liner brush into a little point by rolling it on your palette. And I'll put a little dot for a mouth. And there we go. And I'm going to dip into my burnt sienna. I'm not rinsing my brush out each time. I'm just making sure I bring my 
liner brush to a point. I'm just gonna get a little, little tiny dot for a nose and just block that a little bit. And then what I wanna do is I'm going to take a little bit of my white down to my little skin color and just get a little highlight on this little side of the cheek there, just a little tiny bit, little highlights on the front edge of her body that's showing there. And then maybe just a little dot here and there to give the indication that she's holding on to her little stem from the leaf. And then I am going to take a little bit of her hair color and just kind of brush in some, just maybe some little wispy, little pieces of hair down her forehead there. All right, and I think I'm liking that, so I'm gonna back out and I'm going to keep my liner brush, but I'm gonna sign it, so let me back you back out. And I think I'm gonna come down here with just phthalo blue. So I've got my liner brush, and I'm getting some phthalo blue on my liner brush. And we are finished with our little fairy flying through the air with her leaf. Thank you for keeping me company today, and I hope you created something special for yourself. Until next time, bye-bye.